And good evening from Havana, Cuba, where earlier today, just 14 hours after the president talked about his opening to Cuba during his State of the Union address last night, we arrived here today with the first senior American official to visit this nation in decades. We flew here along with the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State, Roberta Jacobson, on a commercial flight, American Airlines, in fact, and when she set foot on Cuban soil to begin those normalization talks, it changed in its own way a lot of history in just a day. And with the lights of Havana Harbor in the backdrop for us tonight, it's where we begin with our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, covering it all here with us. Andrea, good evening. Good evening, Brian. And the Cuban people clearly want this to work. But for the president's new opening to become reality, both sides have to overcome decades of mistrust. She is the highest ranking U.S. diplomat to go to Cuba in 38 years, leaving Miami for Havana this morning. Assistant Secretary of State Roberta Jacobson, set to begin negotiations tomorrow to normalize relations with Cuba. Her counterpart, a powerful Cuban diplomat, Josefina Vidal. That meeting took place in a constructive and respectful uh, atmosphere. And on Cuba. All prompted by the opening President Obama celebrated last night, made possible in part by the freeing of American aid worker Alan Gross, one of the First Lady's guests at the State of the Union. There is a lot of history to overcome. Revolution, the Bay of Pigs, bizarre CIA attempts to assassinate Fidel Castro, even a plot to use an exploding cigar, Cuba's imprisonment of dissidents, the U.S. economic blockade, the furious emotional tug of war in both countries about who would get custody of a shipwrecked six-year-old boy, Elian Gonzalez, in 1999. Rafael Hernandez, a retired banker, and his wife, Maritza Corrales, have seen it all and hope the talks will produce change. We will be, for the first time in our life, perhaps good neighbors, and perhaps we will have really a new deal. Let's see. Good neighbors and a new deal. We need to move on. And the United States need to move on. The major thing we got to fix is the economy. Yeah. Everything comes out of the economy. Tomorrow, the two countries will first talk about opening embassies in Havana and Washington. Negotiating regular commercial flights will take longer, perhaps even a year. Then banking, credit, financial ties. Most challenging for the Cuban government, say observers, universal access to the Internet, exposing more people to a wider world. The hope is that tomorrow's talks will pave the way for Secretary of State Kerry to come in a few months. And finally, a meeting in April, the first, between Cuba's President Raul Castro and President Obama. Brian? Andrew, I have to say, uh, given the flight we both took here today, given the sense of moment about this, it didn't feel like a big moment to be on it. I realized the assistant secretary went down the air stairs first, then her assistant. That left me the third American walking down the stairs, part of no delegation. I didn't have time to reach for my phone. That I know of, there's no photo of them setting foot and arriving, which is odd. Well, we asked to take pictures, but in fact, they did not want pictures. They want to take a low-key approach. They truly do not know how this is going to go. And the talks start tomorrow, and they're optimistic. But they don't know what kind of reaction they're going to get from the other side. All I know is we witnessed something here today after a long night's journey that started when the president finished last night in Washington. Andrew Mitchell here Pretty with cool, us it? for it uh, all day and all night, Andrew.